I want to move to the subject which may be of interest to you. And this is the subject of minority rights in Pakistan. Our constitution, as Ms. Sabah just told us, assures freedom to profess religion, to manage religious institutions, subject to public order and morality. Our constitution in Article 21 safeguards uh, particular religions against taxation for the purposes, uh, sorry, it safeguards against taxation for purposes of any particular religion. So for no particular reason can other religions be taxed. Article 22 safeguards educational institutions in respect of religion, etc. No religious instruction or ceremony in educational institution other than one's own religion is to be given to the students. No citizen can be denied admission to educational institutions which receives aid from public revenues on the ground of race, religion, caste, place or birth. Basically, our constitution says everyone is free to profess their religion. All citizens are, have equal rights, there is no discrimination amongst them. And yet, for years our minorities have felt discriminated, have felt sidelined, marginalized. It is in these circumstances in the year 2014, some nine years ago, the Supreme Court, under the charge of Chief Justice Tasadu Ghazan Jilani, who sits with us right here, took up this challenge and came up with directions to protect the rights of the minorities. There were several directions that were issued. Directions about curriculum, directions to ensure that there is no hate speech on social media against minority religions, directions that a National Council for Minority Rights be established, a task force be established, and a special police force be established to protect religious places of worship a job quota for minorities at 5% be ensured and similarly an admission quota in educational institutions be ensured. For many years, this, these directives were carried out under the charge of Mr. Shweb Sattu who sits right here. That was a one-man commission. He worked strenuously, selflessly, and achieved many objectives. I may agree with Sabaha, there's a lot more to be done. But pursuant to that judgment, there was movement and a great deal was done. Today, the minorities see that judgment as an umbrella which protects their rights. Today, the Supreme Court acts as a facilitator vis-a-vis -vis the government authorities who have been cooperative. We must not overlook the fact, ladies and gentlemen, we have been through at least three decades of extremism. We have lost 80,000 citizens in this country to extremism. And by the grace of God, the situation is improving. And a lot of the complaints regarding violence which the minorities had, and even, even Muslims had, because of sectarian uh, rivalries, they have diminished. I think that is that resilience which the Pakistani nation has shown through these turbulent times 
is a great credit to the people of Pakistan. And with great respect also the state of Pakistan. Things are on the mend. A task force which is, uh, was not in existence has come into being recently on 16th of November 2022 under the chairmanship of the additional secretary, Ministry of Religious Affairs and Interfaith Harmony. The members of the task force include almost all important executive functionaries in the country, which means that the issues relating to minorities' protection and minorities' rights would now be handled by persons who, who are directly related and who have uh, authority over the persons that will carry out the instructions. I have hope and expectation that this task force will do well. Our association with Mr. Sadhu continues because he is a court appointee. The court has a special implementation bench. Nine years have passed, but there is an implementation bench for this judgment. And today I have been mentioned a few issues. I said file an application. You see, courts cannot pass executive orders. We cannot act on verbal statements or complaints. These matters come to us through petitions or applications. Each notice is issued to the concerned parties and respondents come forward and an order is passed after hearing the parties. But these are public interest proceedings. There is nothing adversarial about that. And I may assure you, uh, for quite some time I was the chairman of the implementation bench. Now it is headed by someone else. And uh, uh, we always found cooperation from the government of Pakistan, as well as the provincial governments. So, nothing to despair about. Be positive and inshallah, we'll progress further in this direction. You see, the protection of minority rights, the protection of rights of different sects within the fold of Islam All this has to do with awareness and knowledge. You will be pleased to know that the Islamic faith does not appreciate sectarianism. There are several verses of the Quran that talk about it. And it is said that leave this, these differences to God. Don't fight amongst yourselves. What you have to do is Amar bil Maruf wa Nahi anil Munkar. Amar bil Maruf is do good deeds. Nahi anil Munkar is others who do bad deeds just inform them and tell them don't do this. You don't have to become violent. You don't have to become aggressive. But you should stop that. You should advise that. In relation to uh, religion, the Surah Bakara in Ayat 256 says, there is no compulsion about religion. There is no compulsion in faith. This is your own will, your own wish. In uh, uh, Surah Maida, it is number 5, Surah 5, Ayat 32. It is said, whoever kills one person unjustly is as though he has killed all of mankind. And whoever saves one life, it is as though he has saved all mankind. Mankind, whatever the form, whatever the color, whatever the creed, whatever the faith, is indistinguishable. 
There is no discrimination. That is how the Almighty considers human beings. In Surah Al-Anam 6, Surah 6, 108, the Almighty says, Do not denigrate the deities of other faiths, lest their ignorance, in their ignorance, they disrespect Allah. Thus, Allah has made pleasing to every community their deeds. Let them do their deeds, their religious deeds. In Surah Hajj 22, Ayat 40, he says, due to, due to the intervention of Allah, to protect the places of worship of other faiths, The people who were confronting and fighting with each other did not destroy those places of worship. God intervened to prevent the destruction of places of worship. This is how important they are. This is how important the right of worship is. And so on. There's more, but I will not spend more time on that.